I love your portraits in the back, Katie. Yeah. So lovely. Well, everybody in my house is like in different rooms because my mom also lives downstairs in the basement. So it's just like, it's quieter in my room. <laughs> Even though I'm in my bedroom. Well, I want to be very respectful of the time since I promised everyone that this was going to be 10 minutes with 52. So I want to get started. Um, welcome everyone to 10 minutes with 52 Limited. My name is Elaine Shea. I'm the community engagement manager at 52 Limited, which is a local um, staffing agency for creative and tech. Um, this was really, you know, this worldwide pandemic is affecting all of us. Um, and I totally support flattening the curve as does everyone else at 52 and hopefully everyone else within, you know, Portland and the city and the country. Um, we do, we do have to do our part. Um, but I sure do miss people, um, as an extrovert and as an event enthusiast, it's really hard to not be around my friends and family during this time of crisis. And so um, here we are with 10 Minutes with 52 Limited. Today's guest is Katie Ogsberger. She is an employee experience strategist and partner at Future Work Design. And she will share with us um, kind of her thoughts and feelings and state of the union of what's currently happening. So Katie. Hi, um, welcome to my bedroom. I didn't expect to invite 25, 50 people in here, but such is the state of things. Um, I hope everyone's holding up okay. I think it has become like super normal to say that these are extraordinary times, but what else can we say is happening right now? It feels extraordinary. So when Elaine asked if I could do a 10 minute talk, I honestly had <laughs> no idea what I could say, which for me is like really something because I am rarely at a loss for words. Um, but it was hard for me to think of what to say during something like this. This is hard and it is confusing and it is scary and it feels like the information changes each day. And it's hard to even imagine a moment after this moment. However, when I was thinking that, it reminded me of another time in my life that felt like this. Uh, when I was 22 years old, uh, September 11th happened. And I've been thinking back to that day and some of the things I had wrote to myself about how I was thinking. When we generally think back to that day, we have like all of this historical context that we wrap around that moment and we make sense of it based on what we knew after September 11th. Um, we look at like how our country has changed and how our travel habits have changed. And 9-11 has become kind of this like catch-all phrase to mean not just that morning, but like all the series of events that happened after that morning. But when I think about the actual day and I read the things I wrote to myself, um, I was really scared. I didn't know when the chaos would stop. I was scared for my family. I was scared for my friends that lived in New York. Um, I was scared here in Portland. I was worried um, that there was going to be an attack here because we had no sense of when this was going to stop. It just felt ongoing and it felt confusing and we were getting misinformation. <clears throat> I was worried because I did not have a great deal of faith in our, our, our government and head of our government. Uh, I was nervous because my career and life was just getting started and it felt like suddenly it was an end to a story and it wasn't the beginning anymore and it felt like my life had um, taken a trajectory that I could not control. Uh, at the time, I was working at a hospital, and we were holding, we were in a holding pattern waiting for an attack, uh, waiting for patients to come in, and <clears throat> we had no idea that the attacks were over. We had no idea that there would be no attack in Portland. It was just chaos and scary. Uh, this moment will be bigger than that moment. <laughs> this moment will touch us in profound ways it will not be one morning, but it will be a series of mornings and afternoons and nights and sleepless nights. It will not be in three different places. It will be everywhere all at once. So it feels bigger. But it's still a moment. It's still a moment. A moment that we will one day look back and recognize had changed us significantly. 
Um, and if we can remember that there is a moment after this moment, I feel like it can help us. When I think back to September 11th and how I felt, I also think what I learned from it. So here's what I've learned <laughs> from that moment. I learned that it's much easier and far more comforting in a really gross and strange way to react in fear instead of playing for possibility. It is so much easier and so much more comforting to hold in tight, grab all the toilet paper and, <laughs> and like hold, right? Um, but planning for possibility and for abundance feels scary and feels impractical. I learned that optimism and hope is the bravest act, that when we are optimistic, uh, when we believe in something bigger than ourselves, it is the most brave thing we can do. Um, but most importantly, I learned that grief can be collective, that not just in a family, but in a nation and in a world, and it is a process that you're not just grieving death, because there will be death, but you're grieving a way of life, a way of being, a sense of security and simplicity that we all didn't even realize we had until two weeks ago. We grieved this way after Kennedy was killed, after 9-11, I know I grieved and was in terrible depression after Sandy Hook, but we don't actually name it and give ourselves um, the tools to experience collective grief. And I think that's what we're feeling right now. So even though 9-11 is way different than this moment, I am using it to come up with my COVID plan. And I don't mean the extensive school schedule that I have come up with with my for my daughter that I immediately abandoned. <laughs> I mean how I prepare for this moment and the moment after this moment. So I'm going to share this with you and I hope uh, it is helpful and feel free to abandon it like I've abandoned my daughter's schedule or use it. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grieve. Nahir Wahid wrote that grief, grieve so that you can be free to feel something else. So I will grieve. I will allow myself to grieve. I will grieve my old life. I will grieve the easy childhood that my daughter had. I will grieve my old checking account. Lord, will I grieve that old checking account. <laughs> I will grieve wearing real clothes you cannot see, but of course I'm wearing yoga pants under here. I will grieve that whole life because it was great and I didn't realize how great it was until two weeks ago so I'm gonna grieve it and then I want the future to be more abundant and more sustainable I do not want to return to business as usual business as usual was inequitable business as usual means that we have to worry that kids that have to stay from home from school will go hungry business as usual means that people that get this virus will have terrible medical bills. Business as usual means people are going to work sick because they have no choice. But worse than business as usual is if we react in fear after this moment instead of possibility. We have to start planning what comes next, not just on a national level, but in our own homes and workplaces. We have to plan for expansive, different future that will not come unless we really imagine it. So I'll be spending my time imagining. After my grief, I will spend my time imagining what I want. And third, if you're a client of mine, you, when, you have heard me say um, firefighting versus fire prevention. Uh, what that means is when something bad happens at work, we often react to fight the fire. And all we can see is the fire. But it's harder to say, why did this fire happen? What needs to be solved to prevent this fire in the future? We can't waste this crisis on a national level, on an organizational level, on a household level. We need to start investigating now. How did this happen? What worked well about our response? What do we need to learn for next time? What plan do I have in place to ensure this doesn't happen again? And if it does, what resources do I have to fight it? So grieve, imagine, and plan. So in closing, there is a moment after this moment, I can feel, I can feel daily that there never will be a moment after this moment, that this is all there is, but there will be. We have to imagine it and we have to plan for it. 
But first, rest, eat the chips, play with your kiddo, watch Netflix, grieve. Grieve so that you can be free and, and imagine a better and more abundant future. Thanks. Thank you, Katie. And thanks for everyone that joined us today. Um, we'll see you again tomorrow. 10 Minutes with 52 Limited.